So here's what I've learned in the past few years of running my puzzle channel. It is a lot easier to acquire new jigsaw puzzles than it is to make videos about all of the new puzzles that I've been getting. <laughs> So our first batch of puzzles are actually really interesting. So these are puzzles from the 1930s. If you've been watching my channel, you know that when I buy vintage puzzles, I typically go for puzzles from like the 70s, the 80s, maybe the 90s, but puzzles from earlier than that, like from before mass manufacturing, um, that's kind of its own beast. So these were sent to me by a man named Ned, and these were gifted to his father for like Christmas and birthdays in the 1930s. So he got in touch with me and basically just offered to send me this like beautiful puzzle collection. All of the graphic design is just so beautiful. I love old timey like graphics like this. Um, some of the boxes are in better condition than some of the others, but it is just so interesting looking at these puzzle pieces and sort of seeing where you know, the jigsaw puzzles we do today, like where that came from. So I need to do a lot of research into the companies behind all of these different puzzles. I'm definitely going to be consulting my jigsaw puzzle history book quite a lot. And I just want to say a big thank you to Ned for entrusting me with his like family heirlooms. Um, I cannot wait to take a closer look. Okay, so now let's move on to the big boys. Look at what I got. It is my dream 9,000 piece puzzle. This is the Ravensburger Minions puzzle. I talked about this at the end of my 24,000 piece puzzle series when people were asking like, what's the next big puzzle you wanna do? I was saying this one, but it was never sold in the US, so I just couldn't find one anywhere. Well, that's not true. Um, you could buy it online, getting it shipped from Europe, but it was just really expensive to do that. But then I heard from a viewer named Lisa who offered to sell me hers. So we like worked out the shipping and everything and now I have it. This puzzle has been done before. Um, you can see the pieces are split up into like Ziploc bags. It's not the original packaging, but uh, I think Lisa said that all the pieces should be there. So crossing my fingers. <laughs> I already posted about it on Instagram because I was so excited when I first got it. Um, I had been planning on basically doing this video right around now. I am just so busy with so many like different non-puzzle related projects that I just haven't had the like two weeks that it would take to assemble the puzzle and then like another week for editing. It's gonna be a big project. So I don't know exactly when I'm get gonna get to it, but hopefully soon. So next we have this Jigsaw Puzzle Advent Calendar. This is made by the New York Puzzle Company and I actually have my Christmas tree up already in the other room. So let's head out there and I'll open this up. All right, I'm so excited to open this up and find out what's in here. All right, so here's the design on the front. I think it's really fun. I love how all of the Christmas ornaments are our little puzzle pieces. On the back, you can see we have a little preview of all of the different designs that we'll be putting together. And now here's the moment of truth. What do you get inside the exciting red box? Ooh, oh, that's so pretty. So here is a puzzle one and oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Okay, I know it's not December 1st yet, but I will be traveling for part of December, so I won't be able to do this 
you know, every day of the month. So I'm just gonna do the first one now. This is only a hundred piece puzzle, so I don't think it's actually gonna take me very long. Well, that was a delightful this many minutes. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I will definitely be doing these throughout December, so keep an eye on my Instagram. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna be posting stories with each day's puzzle. If you know someone who's really into puzzles, I think this would be an amazing gift. It's like the perfect size to just do over breakfast, over your coffee. Opening this up, I felt like a beauty guru because they always get the fun beauty advent calendars. And now we have one for puzzles. So moving right along, I thought that I would show you some vintage puzzles that I have acquired recently. So this was a great find. I had an eBay alert set and as soon as this popped up, I was like, I don't care what the price is, that is mine. This is the Snow White Without the Seven Dwarves solid white jigsaw puzzle from the 1970s. As far as I know, and I've said this a few times, so I really hope it is true. As far as I know, I think this was the first solid colored jigsaw puzzle series ever released. So there's the red one, which I already have. That one is, you know, not a little rare, but not super rare, like you can find them. The white one is a lot more rare. I, this is like the only one that I've seen pop up on eBay since I started looking out for it. And then there's also a brown one, which seems to be the most rare of all. Like on this site, WorthPoint that I use, which basically archives old eBay auctions, for the entire length of, you know, eBay that they've been archiving them, only four of this solid brown colored puzzle have ever shown up for sale. So who knows if I'll ever get my hands on the brown one, but in the meantime, I got the white one. It's not perfect. Um, there is like some pen marks on some of the pieces and the box is in a little bit of rough shape, but I'm just so happy that I have this. Next, I got another solid colored red puzzle. <laughs> Next year, I'm definitely going to do a video of just showing my entire collection of solid colored puzzles because it has grown quite a bit. So the story about this puzzle is that I was actually looking for a different red puzzle also called the Red Menace. That one I have not been able to find for sale. But when I was Google image searching it, a picture of this one popped up and I was like, what is this solid red puzzle that I've never seen before? How is there another one that I've never seen before? So this was made in 1974 by Game of Files Unlimited based in Morristown, New Jersey. I don't really know anything about this company or, you know, other puzzles that they may have released or where this came from. I can't even look at the piece quality or the piece shapes because it's still sealed. So I'm going to wait for a video where I like talk specifically about this until I open it up. So if anyone has any information about Game of Files Unlimited, uh, let me know. Next, uh, this is a puzzle that I kind of just got for fun. I just thought it was really pretty. When I was on the eBay auction for this, I had an alert set and basically the description said, like, me and my girlfriend are working on putting this together. If we finish it and all the pieces are there, I'm gonna raise the price by a few dollars. So I just kept an eye on it because I didn't really want to buy an incomplete puzzle and uh, they finished it. All the pieces were there. They raised the price a little bit, but it was still totally fine. So I went ahead and bought it and now I have it. 
And then I also got the gold Prismagic puzzle. So I did the whole video about the first Prismagic puzzle. It was honestly one of the most beautiful puzzles I'd ever seen. And on the box, it said that it was number one in a series. So this version is number two in that series. As far as I know, they never released number three, four, etc. It's just these two. But this is another holographic puzzle with this like beautiful shiny paper on the pieces. So at some point next year, I'm gonna dive back into a holographic puzzle and I'm gonna put this one together. Like, I just can't even get over how beautiful this looks. It's just so shiny and it's like little jewels in your puzzle box. I cannot wait to do this one. And then uh, this one is not a vintage puzzle. This one is actually brand new. This is the Gradient Crypt Puzzle from Ravensburger. So far, this has only been released in Europe. I think it's coming out in the US um, sometime next year. But since I have made a name for myself as a Gradient Puzzle, expert. <laughs> they sent one to me early. So it is the Crypt um, Puzzle Cut. I think it's the same as the Gold Crypt, I want to say. It's the exact same cut, except that it has this gradient over it. So it'll definitely be a whole lot easier than the normal Crypt Puzzles, which are just a solid colored puzzle. So I was thinking for a video, I would sort of time myself and see how long this one takes versus the normal like gold one. So hopefully sometime next year I'll get to that. In the meantime, it's just another gradient puzzle to add to my collection. All right, so now we are moving into more like modern, normal puzzles that anyone can get their hands on. So I got some new wooden puzzles. Um, I got two from Puzzle Michelle Wilson. They gifted these to me um, about a month ago and I already did one of them. I have a whole video talking about both uh, these and the Wentworth puzzles. So if you wanna see you know, all the details of these types of puzzles. You can go watch that video. But I just love Puzzle Michelle Wilson because since it's all hand cut and the pieces are really organic and random, it's a really like surprisingly difficult puzzling experience. And you just feel such a connection between you and the person who cut the puzzle. Like it's just such a joyful experience and all of their illustrations are just really beautiful. And then these puzzles were actually sent to me quite a while ago, a few months ago, but I only just got to them. So Wentworth released a few puzzles with really colorful, like gradient designs. <laughs> These are right up my alley. I love the colors, especially when you have that, plus the really satisfying thick wooden pieces. And the piece shapes aren't your typical like jigsaw puzzle shapes. They're these like interchangeable geometric shapes. So even though these puzzles are only about 250 pieces, they were surprisingly difficult. So next is a puzzle company that is new to me, but um, I've seen them all over like Facebook and Instagram. This is called Puzzled Lee. They have these really fun, brightly colored illustrations. Um, this one, especially the geometrical rainbow, I'm so excited for. I was so excited when they offered to send me some puzzles because yeah, this is just so bright and happy. This one I just put together yesterday, actually, and it was really fun. My only complaint is that the pieces don't lock together very well, so moving large sections is kind of a pain, but otherwise the piece quality is totally fine, and as I said, the illustration is just so fun and colorful. 
I also got a few new puzzles from Good Fit, which is another puzzle company that I really enjoy. This one is called uh, Celebration Day, and it was actually fairly challenging because you have so much of the same color across a lot of the puzzle, but I really liked this one. This one called Savage Nature. Am I crazy or does this look just like the new Lady Gaga CD cover? Like when I opened the box and I saw this one, I was like, did Good Fit do a collaboration with Gaga? But as far as I can tell, um, this is just a standalone illustration. It was really fun to do as a puzzle, a little more challenging than I expected, but the colors are beautiful and I really enjoyed that one. And then here's one more, which I haven't gotten to yet, but I definitely will soon. And then, of course, we have a new stack of Cloudberries puzzles. I love Cloudberries. They are so generous with sending me puzzles. And I have actually done all five of these already. I have been in a little bit of a funk lately. I've just been really like tired and feeling burned out. So for the past few weeks, I've actually spent quite a lot of time starting a new Gilmore Girls rewatch for about the hundredth time. I typically can't watch TV while I do a puzzle because you can only look at one thing at a time, but with Gilmore Girls, I've seen it so many times that I can just listen to it and know exactly what is happening. So I just got up to season three, AKA the best season, and I have already finished all of these puzzles while doing that, so let me show you. So here is a Wilderness, a 500 piece puzzle. Um, this one was fun because we did this whole like social media campaign around it where there was this puzzle that I gave some of the clues to. This one is actually really interesting. This is called Crowdberries and this is a crowdsourced puzzle image. So at the end of last year, they had this online tool where they had basically the outline of this design online and you could color one of the diamonds. They actually sent it to me a little early, so I got to go first and I did, I think this pink one right in the middle. But doesn't that picture remind you so much of the Wentworth puzzle? Like these puzzles are so similar to each other. <laughs> Next we have hands, which uh, is pretty easy because the colors are so, you know, easily broken up. And so I made this fun little animation for it. Then there's this one called Epicurean, which is just an illustration of food and books and fruit. And then finally, this colorful one called Dreamscape, which, you know, has some gradients, but it's also kind of like an, a colorful alien planet. So now that I have finished these, I think all of them except for Crowdberries. I think I'm gonna keep this one, but I think the rest I'm gonna put into my donation pile. Same with the Good Fit ones. You know, I enjoy these puzzles, but I just have so many puzzles that if it's something that I can't really see myself returning to, or there's not like a special twist or something really interesting about it, then I put it in my donation pile so that other people can enjoy them too. And finally, it is mail time. So I knew that I was doing this video. So for some of these packages that I just got, I thought it would be fun to wait and open them on camera. So I actually think I'm gonna start with this one because I know it's in here and I'm really excited for it. All right, what have we got? Ooh, it's so pretty. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me get them all out of here. So these are the new gradient puzzles from Soonness. I've been in touch with Soon, who runs the company for a little while. And when she offered to send me her gradient puzzle collection, I was just like, yes, absolutely. These are my like dream puzzles. Like just look at those colors. 
I can't even believe it. The box is beautifully designed. This is like my perfect ideal color palette. I cannot wait to do these. And I'm definitely gonna have the boxes out on display because they're so beautiful. All right, next we have a package from Piecework which is a puzzle company I've really been enjoying this year. I actually don't know which puzzles they sent me this time, so this will be a surprise. So, oh, first we have a tote bag. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I love little extras like that. Ooh, oh, I know what this one is. Okay, they did tell me they were sending this one. So this is Wallflower, which is their first 1500 piece puzzle. Oh wow, it's so pretty! Look at that! We also have um, Field Day. Super fun. Then we've got... Ah, ah. <laughs> okay, that box was not balanced correctly. <laughs> okay, next we have a Christmas one. So this one is called Tinseltown. And then, ooh, this one's so pretty. This one's called Smart Cookie. And this one is called Tall Poppy. And then there's also this really little guy, a mini puzzle. Oh my gosh, it's a Capricorn puzzle. Did they like look at my birthday and find out that I'm a Capricorn? Because I am. What I love most about the piecework puzzles is that the box legitimately looks like a coffee table book. They're just designed so beautifully. The piece quality is great. Their photography is always, I don't know how they do it, but they always walk the exact line between being aesthetically beautiful, but also being really fun to put together as a jigsaw puzzle. And that's really hard to do. So um, I'm probably not doing a gift guide video this year, but if I was, I think that piecework would be my number one pick as puzzles to give as gifts. You know, they feel high quality and luxurious and special, but they're not totally gonna break the bank. So if you're looking for puzzles to give or ask for her as gifts. Um, I definitely recommend anything from Piecework. Ooh, okay, I know what's in here. <laughs> this one is, uh, <laughs> well, you'll see. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe I own this now. Well, this box is the exact right size for this puzzle. Oh my God, it's the Pizza John puzzle. <laughs> I love Pizza John. So this might require a little explanation. There is an author named John Green who has a YouTube channel with his brother Hank. 10 years ago, uh, Pizza John came into the world and it just caught on. And so now every year, um, John and Hank do a Pizza Miss where they just release tons of products that all feature Pizza John. All the money goes to charity. And this year, for the first time ever, they launched a puzzle. It was limited edition. You could only get these products during the like two weeks that Pizza Miss was happening. So when I saw this, I jumped right on it. Oh, I didn't even see. It's called Puzzle John. That's so perfect. I love this. <laughs> I'm so happy that I own this. And then finally, we have one more thing. And this actually isn't a puzzle. It is still in the like puzzles and games genre. Um, it's actually a board game. Oh my gosh. Yes! Oh my god! It is the What Would Lizzie Do? The Lizzie McGuire board game. <laughs> I love this. I love it. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe I own this. <laughs> so I was the exact right age to be watching Lizzie McGuire when it was first airing on the Disney Channel. I am obsessed with this show. I've seen every episode multiple times. I even dressed up as Lizzie McGuire from the School Picture Day episode for Halloween one year. And I have an entire video of how to make her unicorn sweater over on my DIY channel, so feel free to check that out. So anyway, I was just 
browsing the internet recently and I found out that there was a Lizzie McGuire board game released back in what, like 2003 when the show was first airing? And I was like, I need this. I need to play it with my friends. It was only about $20 on eBay, which I think is a steal, honestly. <laughs> my friends and I are all hanging out tomorrow, so I'm definitely gonna bring this and I'm gonna make them play it with me. <laughs> One, two, three. Ooh, your choice. Show you another trivia question. Do trivia. You're the only one who's gonna be able to get those. While helping Matt earn a wilderness cadet's patch, his dad found what kind of leaf? I know this one. It was poison ivy, and he got really itchy, and the whole episode was just the dad, like, having horrible things happen to him outside. Who is Lizzie McGuire? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. How, how correct do you think I am? That's our voting huh, system. I wonder. 30. 30. That feels fair. That's 30. another 90 points for me. It's a new rule. We are all playing for this to end, okay? <laughs> So Karen must do it. Everyone's individual goal yeah. is for this to eventually end. Oh yeah, I should have this taken my a new part rule. then. But I know that Andy was in the seventh grade because Lizzie was in the eighth grade and she wanted to mentor a seventh grader. Who's Andy? I feel like I walked into another universe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's a little secret. I'm actually filming out here a few days after I filmed back in the other room. So what that means is that I've now played the Lizzie McGuire board game and I'm sure you're all waiting for an update. Here's my review. This game seems both over-designed and yet not designed well. The rules are really complicated and they're essentially designed in order to make 12 year old girls hate each other. So here's what it looks like. Um, there are a lot of components. Essentially, the way it works is that based on what card you have to play on your turn, you either do a challenge or you answer a trivia question or you're given a scenario and you have to tell the, the group what you think Lizzie McGuire would do in that scenario. And for all three of those, the scoring works by the other three players giving you points based on how well you did the challenge, how original your answer was, or how confident you seem in your trivia answer. So you don't actually have to be right. Um, as long as everybody else thinks that you're right, you know, theoretically, they would then give you your points. So the game really does operate under good faith because you know, you really have to trust that the other people you're playing with will score you fairly. And I can just see playing this with like 12 year old mean girls and all three of them giving each other 30 points for each turn, but giving me zero points because um, apparently these 12 year olds hate me. I will say I did very well on the Lizzie McGuire trivia questions. And I think as long as you keep it fun and you really don't get mad at each other for not giving the correct number of points that you deserve based on how confident you are in your Lizzie McGuire trivia knowledge, you know, it could be fun, but the game designers on this were not, uh, you know, the top of the line. <laughs> All right, so big news. I kind of saved this bombshell for the end of the video. This is the last video that I'm going to be making with this background. <laughs> Did you like that little fake out there? So basically, this room where I film has just gotten so cluttered and crowded. I don't have space for anything. There are piles of puzzles literally everywhere. Being in this room honestly gives me a lot of anxiety because there's just like stuff everywhere. Also, I've had this background for over a year now and I just feel like it's time for a big reorganization and a little bit of a change. I'm definitely planning to simplify my new background because um, the reason why I typically only wear like plain black shirts while I film is because the background is already so busy that if I start wearing patterns and colors, 
I'm just gonna blend in and he'll just be like a floating head. So this is the last video that I'm gonna film in here for a little while while I get everything reorganized. I'm planning to do a video all about my reorganization process and showing the before and after, so stay tuned for that. I do still have a few other like non-puzzle related projects that I need to finish up before the end of the year, so hopefully I'll have time to do another video or two before Christmas. We'll just have to see. I'll keep you updated on Instagram. And yeah, <laughs> those are all my new puzzles. I am legitimately like drowning in puzzles. I have more puzzles than I know what to do with. So I'd love to know in a comment which of the puzzles that I showed would you be most excited to see a video about? Or feel free to let me know like which ones you would want to do for yourself. I'm gonna have links to everything that I showed that is available to buy um, right down below in the description. Um, oh, a code word, we need a code word. Um, I think it will be gradient because I showed a few different gradient puzzles today. So happy puzzling and I will see you all not in front of this background in my next video. Bye everyone.